Hello everybody, welcome to dev blog number three. In this episode we are going to be looking at how to use Blender to create icons or inventory items, I guess is probably the more correct verbiage to use. They're not really icons. I mean, I suppose in the most purest of senses they are an icon, but uh, yeah. Inventory images coming right up. So obviously we are within Blender here and it's actually super easy to do this because we have pretty much no presets we need to stay within other than whatever size your inventory spaces are. So in my case, 32 pixel textures, change the camera to 32 by 32. Uh, you can really have your camera at whatever location you want. You can have your lighting however you want. Um, though I will say this, if you're going to be doing, you know, like a bunch of textures, you probably want to decide upon some certain setup for your camera and where your objects are going to be placed. So you have like the same, the same view of everything pretty much. So like, you know, if I'm making ores, I wouldn't want one or well, let me make this look a little more like the default game ores. And we'll do that by squishing it down and making it narrower here. And then we'll just scale that on the X. All right, so that kind of looks a little bit more like an or. You wouldn't want one or this direction and then another or that, or a lump rather, because that would just be silly. So you do want to decide upon some sort of presets and just save that as a file. And then when you create a new inventory item, open that file up and create it in that file. And you could actually save everything in the same file. Um, but you know what, let's, for starters, let's start with just making ingots. So for our ingot, we're gonna scale the, no, actually, let's do this a little differently. Let's uh, change to edge select and make a loop cut there with control R. And yeah, we'll do it about halfway point. And then we will go back to face select, click on the top face and scale that down like so um, for absolutely no other reason than because I'm like that I'm gonna line it up at the bottom of the world space and then move my camera up it makes absolutely zero effect on anything so don't feel like you have to do it that way I just, just me and being OCD so that's what we're gonna do and let's go ahead and give this a quick test render all right so we kind of have a, a globby mob that looks pretty messy not too surprising. Do we need shadows? No, we don't need shadows. There's nothing for a shadow to cast on. We definitely do not want the sky. We do want a transparent background though. So we will go to shading in the render tab here. And we will change where it says alpha sky. We will change that to transparent. And now we have a transparent background, which is good. Uh, we still have a lot of empty space around this ingot though. So I'm going to move Cameron even closer. And let's try that again. Better, but it's kind of looking distorted. So maybe let's play with the focal length. Because we don't really want this thing super fish-eyed or something. So there's that to play with. And I think we want to increase our focal length. I'll change it to 70. And then we're going to pull the camera back. And up. And that makes us pretty much have zoomed in on the item, which minimizes distortion. I learned this because I do photography. And to eliminate distortion in your images, you should pull the camera further back and zoom in. This is what I was told anyway. I'm pretty sure that's true. It seems to have held true every time I have tested it. Okay, so we have this image and it's, it's pretty good, but it, it could be way better. Let's go back to our render settings and I just want to mention something else. Anti-aliasing. Let's turn that off. And we get something that looks like this, which has much sharper edges. Um, but we can't see a difference between these two faces at all. Or wait, I take that back. It's extremely faint, but it is there. Or we can turn anti-aliasing on and we can change it. So that's with eight or five times, eight times, 11 times, 16 times. What is anti-aliasing, you ask? 
Well, it's kind of complicated. The way I understand it is when you have anti-aliasing turned on, your image renders with this as a multiplier. So we're doing a 32 pixel resolution. So when I do that 5, it's actually rendering at, what is that, 160 pixels by 160 pixels. And then it scales it down. And when it scales it down, you get blurred edges. So that is definitely something you want to be aware of. And maybe you maybe fool around with it to see what your results are. Honestly, it does look better at this higher resolution. And we also have all these different filters we can use to uh, pretty much affect how it blurs those pixels together. So again, a lot of things to play around with to kind of decide what works best for you and your artistic method that you're going for. Actually, I like that because that gives me those defined edges still. Pro tip, hitting the number one on your numpad will zoom you into one or one to one. So what I'm seeing here, that is a 32 by 32 pixel image represented on my screen. Um, hitting the oh, home button will, never mind, never mind on the home button. That'll make it fill the screen if it's bigger than the screen, but in this case it's not. So here we have an icon, super, but it's lacking a lot of things, like a texture. So let's go ahead and add a material to this and just give it a quick render. Mm, okay. Well, let's see. Steel should be kind of shiny. So let's turn up, turn up the intensity and turn up the hardness. So it's not, the light's not going to be spread over a wide area. You can see it really well on the, the sphere here. If I turn intense, or the hardness way down, the shininess is just spread all over it. That'd be more like a velvet surface. Um, but the steel is going to be pretty hard for the spec. So let's do another render. And we don't really notice too much of a difference here, mainly because we're looking at such a small size. If I go to rendered view with shift Z, actually, we don't even notice anything there. Probably because, yeah, there's really nothing that the light's catching on. So let me go ahead and turn that back to white. So the light's really not catching on anything there for whatever reason, probably because the light and the camera are both coming from the same angle. If we do a 45, ah, uh, you don't really notice anything bouncing off of it there either. But more importantly, let's add some little scratches and noise. So we're gonna go here. And now you can pretty much be super lazy with this because this, this thumbnail is so tiny. It's so teeny that whatever I put in, It, it pretty much just wrecks it. So what you need to do is turn this down super much. Like, oh, we'll say 0.1 for our influence on there. And now you can just barely see it. There's a little bit of pink showing through. So let's turn that up a little bit. F12 to render, by the way. I want to turn to 0.5. Okay, we have a lot of pink going on here. And that's because it's using that pink. If I change that to green, it'll do that. However, the better way of doing it is using the color ramp feature. And then you can use this and change your colors around. So I want this steel to have a grayish color to it. Okay, but that's way too powerful. So let's crank this up quite a bit more and see what happens. Okay, we're getting more of the light gray showing through. That's good. That's good, but it's still not good enough. So let's select back to... It can be a trick. There we go. And let's make this brighter. Because if we make it brighter, then the dark spots will disappear. Mmm, better. But a little too light now. So let's pull that back a shade. Alright, and let's see. I mean, yeah, that works for me. It kind of has a, a rough surface to it. Now there are so many noise options. Like I could use clouds. And I'd have to pull this out quite a bit to see them. And let's just pull that out some more. All right, so clouds um, kind of give it a cloudy appearance, which is what you would expect from clouds. Uh, there's marble, which will give you 
marble streaks going through it, which admittedly doesn't work so well for an ore, but if you were making a marble material, it would work quite well. Uh, we have this Veroni here, which does like cells like you would see inside of a plant. Again, doesn't really work so well for an ore. And uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and just do this because we can see it way better this way. It pretty much is the same thing we see here, honestly. But or you can do wood, which does a ribbing feature there. But you have a lot more options. Again, this really doesn't work so well for an ore. But that looks nothing. I'm pointing with my hands at my screen, which is stupid because you can't see my hands. <laughs> but this looks nothing like this. It also looks, whoops, it also looks nothing like this because it's at such a small squished size. Everything just gets blurred together, making textures almost useless, honestly. Like you want them very faint. Like something like that when rendered, that looks pretty good. And just some light noise on our ore there. Now, I did in the last episode, I had that lump. And now the lump was uh, a little... What am I trying to do here? Oh, I'm trying to get out of render mode. The lump was a little more uh, a little more fun to do and actually a little more worthwhile. The ore I would probably just draw by hand, honestly. So I started off with a sphere. And then I added a modifier of a displace. It's here someplace. Displace modifier. And I need a noise texture. So I'll just use this texture. Wow, that's not what I used, but that'll work. I'm going to turn the strength down so it's a little more blobby like that. And then you shade smooth. Uh, honestly, this doesn't matter too much when you render it. Because again, we're at such a tiny size. Okay, so that's shaded flat. And we'll shade it smooth. Wait, I thought I could switch between this and previous render by doing F11. Hmm, I can't. Okay, so we do notice some difference here. This is a little rougher looking. Which, that is how it's supposed to work. But play with it. Decide what works best for you. Uh, I was trying to go for a rough look to my ore because, well, it, it's kind of the way it works. We are going to use a tool called Proportional Editing. We are going to enable it. And now I can click on any vertice here and click and drag and you'll see there's a big white circle that shows and I kind of am pulling everything with it and I can change that with page up and page down. So if I page down I can make it so it only affects one vertice or I can page up and make it affect almost the whole sphere. So that's handy to use. I actually want to pull it outward though to just do quick deformations on stuff. And you can, if you click on the little white circle here, you can actually move it within all the axes. So let's just do some quick deformations on here. And I should point out that if you click on the little fall off type here, there are all different fall off types. So we can set it to random and it'll actually affect them all randomly, which is pretty cool for giving that kind of look that or should have or how my test game represents or and how the other insanely popular voxel game does okay so that looks looks horrible enough let's go back to object mode we still have our noise modifier running on this that's looking pretty good let's go ahead and render this out and see what it looks like looks like a giant blob excellent that's what we want just fill that to the screen a little better all right so this could be some other metal so we do kind of the same things. We make a new material. Um, let's say this is going to be copper. So let's pick an orange-ish. Should be a lot brighter than orange, I feel. But more saturated. Like, like this, maybe? Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. So that's our diffuse color. But let's go ahead and add some noise to this. And we're just going to use a cloud. Cloud, cloud, cloud. Why am I not seeing cloud? There we go. And we're going to use the color ramp again. And actually, let me just change this to rendered mode. Okay, so this is what we're seeing right now. 
pretty crazy. Let's change our mapping. Whoops. Change our coordinates to global. And that kind of just makes it bigger because it's fitting this texture to the world space. And let's tighten this up. And you'll see we now have small spots showing on here. And we're going to change this color, of course. And let's just pick this darker color down there. All right, so now we kind of have this splotchy look. We're seeing some of our specularity showing on there. Um, and we can change that by changing the intensity. And that changes pretty much how much light bounces off. And the hardness will affect which faces show it. Uh, it's a lot more visible on circular objects or rounded objects, I guess, because this is all flat faces, you don't notice too much. If I shade it to smooth, though, you'll really notice, I didn't want that, you'll really notice the hardness fluctuating and changing how it looks. So there is that. Uh, I'm going to keep this at flat shaded, though, I think. Now let's render this, and you'll notice there's a lot of black. There's actually not a lot, but there's black. I don't want there being black. So what we're going to do is create a second lamp. And we'll just duplicate this first sun with Shift D. Switch to Quad View with Control Alt Q. And pretty much set this light up to be like a fill. So I'm going to point it up in kind of in an opposite direction of the other light. And the most important thing is I'm going to turn the energy way down to about 0.25. And now when I render this out, I have eliminated quite a bit of that black and I've just lit these under faces, but I haven't lit them all the way. So if I did that, then it just looks kind of weird. And we want to maintain some of a, you know, 3D aspect. So we want some stuff to be lighter and some stuff to be darker. And actually point one even works pretty well with keeping these dark areas. So now we have some noise in here. It's looking pretty good. Um, honestly, that spectacular is not spectacular at all. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm just going to turn this to zero. And that looks way better. Because when it was doing its anti-aliasing squishing, that white just kind of made a big haze. And I didn't, I didn't care for that. So, again, obviously we can play around with our colors and stuff for forever, honestly. If you want a different pattern... Um, if we want a different pattern, how do we do that here? There's, here we go. Uh, we have this nabula. Nabla? Uh, you can change that. I don't even see anything changing there. But you have the size you can change, which as you make it smaller, it makes your noise tighter. And as you make it larger, it makes it softer. And then you can change the depth, which pretty much is the resolution of the edge. So it's kind of hard to see here, but now it has more grain to it. Again, none of that matters, though, when you're doing something at a 32 or 16 pixel size. Honestly, at 16 pixels, you're probably better off just drawing everything by hand because it's all going to be just kind of a gross blur if you do this method. But for 32 and upward, it seems to work OK. 64 would actually work really well. Like if I just change my percentage to 200 real quick, that's my 64 pixel texture. And honestly, that looks pretty good. I could uh, get by with putting some more uh, detail into this noise and stuff, and it would still, it wouldn't just look like a big muddy mess. So that is uh, it's all stuff you can mess around with. But again, if you're going with those smaller texture sizes, you don't really need to overdo it because it's going to be represented pretty small on screen. There's really not a huge point in making it giant. Now, if you don't want trans or semi-transparent pixels, if you do set anti-aliasing to off, I guess if you just turn it off would have been the better way to say that, you will have no transparent pixels, or I should say semi-transparent. Every pixel will be um, full alpha, no alpha, whichever way that would be. I think that would be full alpha. I, honestly, I don't even know, but you would have pixel perfect edges with no semi transparent pixels. I don't think those cause a problem with inventory images. I've never noticed any problems with it. And I've, I've done stuff that uses semi transparent. 
and I've I've not noticed any problems. So I don't think it's an issue, but again, artistic, you know, if you want it where it's a pixel perfect and you don't have any semi-transparent, just turn anti-aliasing off and it all goes away. And that's pretty much it, really. Uh, it's just, it's a really easy way to create a basis for your texture. Even if you then decide that you want to take this in to your image editing program of choice and either, you know, draw an outline around it in some certain color or you want to tweak things, this gives you a basis to start with. And then it's really easy to be like, yeah, I don't really like these super black pixels here, but I'll change them to, you know, this dark brown color here. And I'll just manually paint those in. And trust me, it's way easier to do a little touch-up work manually painting a few pixels here and there than try to tweak your lighting and your materials to get rid of those. Because as soon as you touch your lighting, everything else changes too. So much easier to go and just paint one pixel out. And nothing was touched but that one pixel you painted. So that's going to wrap DevBlog 3 up. Hopefully this was useful. Hopefully it kind of gave you a little peek into my mind and to my work process and workflow in making these. Obviously, you can do whatever you want, but this is my dev blog, so I'm talking about how I'm doing things. Uh, if you do have questions on any of the dev process, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll try to make a video addressing those or a blog post, whatever is more appropriate. Uh, and I know there have been people who wanted me to do videos on biomes and map gen since like probably a year ago now and I never did because I had no idea what I was doing. Those videos are coming soon because I'm going to be learning about biomes and maybe some about map gen. So that kind of stuff is coming up. It'll probably be as tutorials, not on dev blog. I'm not positive yet, but stay tuned for those.